made we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it god is a good god god is doing something great and wonderful in your life as long as this earth remaineth seed time and harvest shall never cease that was the covenant god made with noah and since that time people have been sowing seed there has been harvest and things has been blooming upon the surface of the earth praise the name of the lord that is an assurance that the holy bible is the word of god and today again we are coming into this Holy Ghost Sunday studying the Word of God, studying the Bible. The Bible is the only holy book in existence. It is the only holy book that God has given unto us by which we can know Him. I want you to welcome yourself into this program in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Welcome your neighbor, welcome your family. This message today is going to bless your life as, as usual. It's going to turn around situations in your life as usual. You are going to receive miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of Yeshua Amashia. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changed it not. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. And he has promised that he is going to give us the Holy Spirit. He promised us in the book of the, of the Gospel. 
that is going to give us the Holy Spirit. This is why we are taking time to have Sundays for the Holy Spirit. If you have been doing this regularly, I can assure you that your miracles are in your hand already. Praise the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. Is our comforter. Is our comforter. No matter what trouble you are passing through, when you call the Holy Spirit, you are going to get a solution. Humorously today, just a couple of um, minutes or hour, just about an hour before I started shooting this uh, video, for about three hours we have been looking for the remote control for our TV. Our son usually likes watching cartoons and... Um, we couldn't find the remote control for the TV and we searched and searched and searched everywhere in the house. We couldn't find it. After like three hours, we couldn't find the remote control. What is going on? Then my wife was just wondering, where could this remote control be? Then I just said that the Holy Spirit will help us to look for it. In the next two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, she looked under the couch and just found it. Something we've been looking for for like, for like three hours. In two minutes, the Holy Spirit discovered it. Praise the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is sweet. The Holy Spirit is available to us if we acknowledge Him. So no matter what trouble that you are passing through, He is the comforter. I want you to know that he is the comforter. There is no pain, there is no sorrow, there is no anguish, there is no sickness, there is no poverty, there is no lamentation in your life that the Holy Spirit cannot eliminate. He is the divine comforter. And when the Holy Spirit comforts you, you are comforted. Praise the name of the Lord. You are looking for a child, the Holy Spirit is your comforter. The Holy Spirit is going to give you a child. You are looking for a job, the Holy Spirit will give you a job. You are looking for prosperity, the Holy Spirit will give you prosperity. You are looking for wisdom, you are looking for blessings. The Holy Spirit is the key. Hallelujah. Yahweh. That is why Holy Ghost Sunday is very, very important. Holy Ghost Sunday is the time you want to fellowship with the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can minister unto you. Praise the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. It is until you call upon him that he moves. He does not force himself into your life. You have to acknowledge him. You have to speak to him. He's your friend. So I just want us to begin this uh, program today by knowing that the Holy Spirit is available to us. Even when you pray, you tell the Holy Spirit, help me to pray. The Bible says that we know not how to pray, but the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayers. So even when it comes to praying, you don't know how to pray. But you can tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me to pray. And the moment you say that, you have acknowledged the Holy Spirit. You have invited the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will demonstrate His power in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. So let us begin this uh, program today with prayers. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, help us to pray. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because you are good. You are good unto us. You are so good, you sent your Holy Spirit into our life, O Lord, to help us and to comfort us in every situation. Father, we thank you for the great blessing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the great blessing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the blood of the Lamb. We thank you for the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. We thank you for the anointing that you have poured upon us that we might reign upon this earth, O Lord. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the adoration. Father, bless us today in the name of Yeshua. As we come into your word, Holy Spirit, guide us. Holy Spirit, teach us. Holy Spirit, open our eyes of understanding. Open our minds. Open our intellect. Open our knowledge. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the deep things of the word of God. Father, we say that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we rebuke Satan. Every force of Satan, we rebuke you in the power. Thank you, Lord. Father, 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praises. We give you worship. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the adoration. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, take control. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts, in our wisdom, in our knowledge, in our understanding. Holy Spirit, have your way. O Manderi Kasabari Amandoro Koshibara Gazembori Amanderi Lesembori Kasambari Amanderi Kesebori Amandoro Koshibori Kasambiri Lesembori Kasambari Amandoro Koshibara Kasemberia Tensima da Kamandere Kesiba da Kashimere O Mondoro Kosabari Amanderi Kesiba da Kashimeria. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Yahweh, Hallelujah, Yahweh, Hallelujah. Yahweh. God is a good God. God is a good God. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, we are going to be looking into the Word of God. We are going to be looking at the Word of God. The title of today's message is what I call, I have multiple topics for today's, today's message. I'm trying to find out which one will be the best fit. Shall I say House of Angels, the Ministry of Angels, Divine Glory of Angels. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, let me just say, hmm, it's a tough word for me to select a topic. Holy Spirit, just help me. Probably before the end of the message, I will come up with one talk with, with, with the name of the topic. Hallelujah. 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 Manderi kesiva da kamondoro kosiva da kaseboria manderia. Le mondoro kosiva da kamandere kesiva da kaseboria manderi. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So let me just call it the chariot of God. Let me just call it the chariots of God. Angelic chariots of God. Angelic chariots of God. Angelic chariots of God. Praise the name of the Lord. That is what I will call the title of today's message. Ali Yahweh. The chariots of God. The angelic chariots of God. That is what I will call today's message. The angelic chariots of God. Praise the name of the Lord. One thing we'll have to know is that God surrounds himself with angels. Everywhere God goes to, angels are always surrounding God. Wherever angels are, that is the place that God will manifest. So at Holy Ghost Sunday, our intention our purpose is to see the manifestation of the holy spirit and we know that the holy spirit is god and if angels are always surrounding god angels are always surrounding the holy spirit the holy spirit moves in the company of angels the holy spirit manifests in the company of angels you see, God created angels for many purposes. For many purposes, angels are were created. They were created to be messengers, to serve God, to bring message from God to man. They were created to, to minister unto the children of God. They are created to praise God. They were created to worship God. Now, in our relationship with God, we need the companionship of the angels of God. There is little or nothing we can do if there are no angels. 
we are not designed, God did not design us, God did not create us to be independent of angels. Because God himself surrounds himself with multitudes of angels. Angels are not protecting God, no. But angels are the, are, are the ministering spirits that God sends to minister unto us. So today's message is to focus on the impact of angel in our quest for spiritual upliftment, in our quest for engagement with the Holy Ghost. There is a role that angels will play in your life when you are relating with the Holy Spirit. And God has set it like that and there's nothing we can do to change it because that is a profitable thing for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Everywhere God goes to, He surrounds Himself with angels. Let us look into the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. Psalm 68 verse 17. Psalm 68 verse 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. Hallelujah. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. So when God is going on an entourage, there are chariots of angels. There are angels, thousands upon thousands of angels, millions of thousands of angels, innumerable numbers of angels. The book of Hebrews says that in the church, in the first church of the, in the church of the firstborn, at Mount Sion, there are innumerable, uncountable number of angels round about the throne of God. So from this onset, we see that angels, they form a, a strong part of our spirituality. We must know the role that angels play because if we don't know it, we might not activate it. And if we don't activate it, we will not manifest it. If we don't manifest it, we will not profit from it. We need to have a good knowledge of the chariots of God. The chariots of God are angels. When God comes to you, He sends angels before Him to come and minister unto us. Praise the name of the Lord. When we come into the presence of God at Holy Ghost Sunday, we must realize that we are coming into the presence of the chariot of God. God moves in a chariot. Hallelujah. And the psalmist is saying here that the chariots of God, the movement of God, the coming of the God, of God, the arriving of the Holy Spirit is with angelic entourage. The chariot of the Holy Spirit is an angelic entourage. And that angelic entourage consists of thousands of angels. Let's look at that psalm again. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them. Look at that. Yahweh is among them. Yahweh is in the midst of angels. Yahweh comes down in the midst of angels. The Lord is among them. So if you want to experience the presence of the Lord, you need to understand that there is an angelic participation in the coming of the Lord. God expects you to activate angels. You must know how to activate angel at, at Holy Ghost Sunday. Holy Ghost Sunday also requires the activation of the angels of God because when you activate the angels of God, the Lord is among them. Praise God. The Lord is among His angels. The Lord flows where His angels lead. There is an important message we must understand about this. Angels are very important to us. When Jacob left his father's house to go to the house of Laban, he got to Bethel and slept there. In a dream, he saw a ladder touching the earth from heaven. 
And on that ladder, angels were going up and down on that ladder. And at the top of the ladder, God spoke to Jacob. Now we see right there that the angels were moving and God spoke. Angels were moving up and down. Angels were in that vicinity and God spoke. That is the power of a church. A true church of God is a place where angels descend and ascend. When you discover a certain place where there is angelic presence, the Lord will always manifest in that place. And that is the power of a church. The Lord said that I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Because there are angels occupying that, that particular place. There are places the kingdom of Satan occupies. And there are places that the angels of God occupies. When a church is located in a place where angels occupy, the kingdom of God in that place must prosper. God works his kingdom through his angels. So you need to be sensitive. Some of you might have had dreams about angels when you slept in a particular place. Maybe you visited somewhere and you slept, you have a dream, you saw an angel coming there. Mark that particular place. That place is not an ordinary place. Jacob came to that kind of a special place where angels were going up and down and the Lord was among them. The Lord was among them. The Lord was among the angels. So Jacob encountered God through the ministry of the angels of God. And his destiny, his life changed from that moment. He got a promise from God and the promises of God are yes and amen. If you live in a house and angels come to visit you in that house, that house is a blessing. That house is a blessing. And if you are living in a house that angels have not visited you, there is something you need to do to activate angels into that premises. There is something you need to do to activate angels to come into your abode. There is something you need to do to activate angels to come into your lockdown room. So it is not enough to just have any room as a lockdown room where you pray. You need to attract angels into your lockdown room. You need to attract angels to come down into your lockdown room and reside there. Because wherever the angels go, the Holy Spirit will follow. Praise the name of the Lord. There are angels over Jerusalem. There are angels over Israel. When the Lord was ascending to heaven, he told the disciples, Depart not from Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Ghost. That is because the angels of God are in Jerusalem. There are mighty angels of God in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a place that you're supposed to visit at least once in a year. There are angels of God that are assigned over Jerusalem. And because the angel of God is assigned over Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit will come there. The Holy Spirit will come there because the Lord is in the midst of his angels. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why the Lord said, told them, stay in Jerusalem. Because in Jerusalem there are angels. And the Holy Spirit will come to where there are angels. So in your lockdown room, you need to know how to activate the presence of the angels of God. God has given us the key, and that is what we are going to discover. How do I activate the ministries of the angels of God in my lockdown room, in my prayer closet? Because if there are angels in your prayer closet, the angels are taking your prayers to heaven. And every one of your requests is going to heaven. And every legitimate prayer request you make must find answer from heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. So we see here in this book of Psalm 
He says that the Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Angels go to holy places. Don't expect to find an angel in a beer parlor. If you are into dirty business, angels cannot come there. If you are into unholy relationship, angels cannot come there. Angels go to holy places. Angels go to holy places. You cannot be fornicating in a room and expect the angels of God to come there. You cannot be lying, stealing, cheating, and killing in a place and expect the Holy Spirit to come there. The Holy Spirit comes to a holy place. The angels of God, they go to holy places. And when they go to holy places, the Lord follows them. The Lord goes with them to bless the place. When Jacob came to Bethel, the angels came to that place. And Jacob woke up in the morning and said that surely this is the house of God. This place is the house of God. This place is the house of God. Because it's a holy place. So you need to have a holy life. You need to live a holy life. You need to know, you need to make your house a holy place. Don't put anything in your house that will annoy God. Don't put any idol in your house. Don't bring any prostitution into your house. Don't allow your children to commit fornication in your house. Don't allow alcohol in your house. If you want the flow of the ministry of angels. Because there are certain things that can defile a place and angels will refuse to come there. So even if God wants to bless you in your house, if your house is defiled, the angels will not come. The angels will not come. So we need to be very, very careful. Praise the name of the Lord. Where you operate from, how you, how you maintain the space around you, it has to be holy. Hallelujah. So let's look at that psalm again. Let's, let's just read it one more time. The chariots of God are 20,000 and thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place. Hallelujah. Let's look at another reference in Psalm 99 verse 1. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He seated between the cherubims. Hallelujah. This is what the scripture says. He said that God sits between cherubims, between angels. So this is a very important thing for us to know because there is a reason for us to learn how to activate the presence of angels. In your lockdown room, in your prayer closet, you need to have the presence of angels because God sits between cherubims. He sits between angels. Angels are singing, you are worthy, O Lord. Hallelujah, you are worthy, O Lord. Let's look at that again. He sits between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. Hallelujah. Something is going to move on this earth for your good. If you come into the dimension of the angels. Something must move. Something must happen. If in your prayer closet there is the presence of angels, the Lord will come and sit there. And the earth must move for you. Things must work for you. Things must work for your favor. Things must work for your beauty. Things must work for your blessing. Let the earth move. Every mountain that has not moved before, in the presence of the angels of God, they will begin to move. When the Lord told the disciples that, if you have faith like a seed of mustard, you shall speak to this mountain that should be removed and they shall move. That is because you are a carrier of the presence of the angels of God. It is not the words that you speak that will move the mountain, but the angels that are hearing your word. Because they are ministering spirit to minister unto us the heirs of salvation. 
That is why we need to know the ministry of angels. They are our messengers. They are our comforter. They work with the Holy Spirit to move the heads. They move the heads. They move the heads. Every time the children of Israel carries the Ark of the Covenant, the earth moves. Praise the name of the Lord. When Joshua came to River Jordan, God told him that let the priest carry the Ark of the Covenant. The moment the feet of the priest touched the water of Jordan, the water stopped and there was a dry path for them. The water stopped when angelic ministry entered the water. They were carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant symbolizes the ministry of angels. It symbolizes the power that God has bestowed upon angels to minister unto us, the children of God. Praise the name of the Lord. God is a good God. I want to, you to know very deep in your heart that there is nothing you can achieve without God using the angels to help you. That is why we are looking at this message. And if you can apply this message into your life, you will never be stranded again. You will never be stranded. Whatever needs to move must move. Any man that needs to move must move. Any law that needs to move must move. He said that the law sits in between the cherubims. Let the earth move. That is where you can begin to command the earth to move. And they will move for your sake in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. God is a good God. At any given time, there are thousands of angels surrounding God. Amen. Now let's look at the book of Revelations chapter 7 verse 11. Revelations chapter 7 verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne. And about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their face and worship God. Angels are always around the throne of God to worship God. Your lockdown room is a replica of the throne of God. So in your lockdown room, there are need, there is a need for you to have thousands of angels in your lockdown room. To worship God. You need to activate angels in your lockdown room. For them to worship God in your lockdown room. That is how you transform your lockdown room into the throne of God. That is the ministry of angels. So and as angels are worshiping God at inside your, inside your lockdown room. Replicating the throne of God in heaven. You are in the presence of God, in the throne of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So angels are important for you to have in your lockdown room. At Holy Ghost Sunday, you must know how to activate angels. So that God, the Holy Spirit, will come and dwell in that place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have mentioned that your house has to be a holy place. It's not a place for fornication, adultery, lying, stealing, cheating, and fighting. You cannot be fighting with your husband or wife every time and expect that place to be holy. You have to be holy in your household, in your secret place. That is when you can guarantee that you can activate angels to come into your household. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Angels are essential in our prayer life. Let us look at what the Bible says about Moses. In the book of Moses, chapter 7, verse 89. And Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him. Then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him. From of the mercy seat that was upon the ark of testimony, from between the two cherubims, from between the two cherubims, God was speaking to Moses 
from between the two cherubims. In your place of prayer, there is a need for communication through the cherubims. We pray in the name of Yeshua. We pray in the name of Jesus. But when God was to speak back to Moses, he spoke to him from between the two cherubims. This is communication with God. Angels are the agents that carries our voice to God. They carry our message to God and bring message from God to us through the cherubims. So this is the chariots of God. That is the communication officers. They are the, they are the information officers. So this is what Moses experienced. That God spoke to him through the two cherubims. He went into the tabernacle, into the secret place of God. That is the lockdown room. That is the prayer closet. So when you go into your prayer closet on Holy Ghost Sunday, you need to activate angels because by activating angels, you are going to hear the voice of God. You are going to hear the voice of God. It is important for you to have angels around you to hear the voice of God. Many people are not hearing the voice of God because there are no angels around them. God wants to speak to us, yes, but he sends his angel. He speaks through his angel. He spoke to Moses through angels. He spoke to Moses through in the, in the, in the story of the burning bush. The angels manifest in the fire. So God always speaks through his angels. When Mary was to conceive of the Savior, God sent an angel to Mary. God is always sending angels with his voice. And whatever the angels come to say, it must come to pass. So in our prayer life, we need to recognize and establish the presence of angelic ministry. There are things God expects us to do to manifest the presence of angels. We can put our faith in the word of God by acting on God's instruction and expecting a manifestation of God's promises. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are seeing a valid reason for us to study and dig deep into the ministry of angels. God surrounds himself with angels. God is in the midst of angels. God spoke to Moses from between the two cherubims. Hallelujah. Let's look at that verse again. Moses went up to the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him. He went to speak with God. He went to pray. Every time people in Israel wanted to pray, they go to the house of God. And when they come to the house of God, they are coming into the presence of the host of the angels of God. Then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from of the mercy seat. Hallelujah. Where there are angels, there is mercy. Amen. When Psalm 23 said that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. It is talking about angels of mercy, angels of goodness. Angels of mercy and goodness. Because he activated the ministry of angels. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord is a good God. We need angels to help us. We need the help of angels of God. When angels are helping you, you are helped. When angels are with you, you have no problem. Hello? When angels are with you, you have no problem. So if you are complaining that you have problems, it's because you don't have angels. Or because you don't know that you have angels. Or because you are not activating angels. 
or because you are not speaking to angels or because you are not doing the things that you need to do to make angels work in your life. If you have angels, you have no problem because angels are the helpers that God has ordained for you. When Daniel was thrown into the den of the lion, who helped Daniel out? The angel of God. Daniel said that the Lord has sent his angels to keep the lion from killing him. The angels of God are your security guard. They are your guarantee of God's promises working in your life. They are the guarantee that everything in your life must work together for your good. 